Let's now focus on quadrant one, as that's where the impedance relay will spend most of its time. Let's now energize the circuit. Power now flows from the source, through the line, and onto the load. And the relay is now measuring a combination of the line impedance and the load impedance. As we know, the load impedance is quite high, and has a characteristic angle of about 20 degrees. We're only really interested of detecting the impedance when a fault occurs on the system. So let's look at what happens to the impedance under these circumstances. If we get a fault at 100% of the line length, this is the impedance value that we will measure. This consists of two components, 100% of the line resistance and 100% of the line reactance. As the fault has occurred on the line, the characteristic angle of the fault impedance is normally about 60 degrees. Let's now apply a fault at 50% of the total line length. As we're halfway down the line, the resistance and reactance values will be about half of the full line impedance, but the characteristic angle will remain at 60 degrees. What about 30% of the line length? Again, both the resistance and reactance values reduce accordingly. As we're now getting closer to the start of the line, the resistance of the line starts becoming more prominent, and the characteristic angle therefore reduces. And finally, at 10% of the line length, the resistance of the line now forms a large part of the line impedance value, and the characteristic angle reduces substantially. We also need to consider the impedance of the fault. When we're at the far end of the line, the impedance of the fault can be substantial, as the current needs to flow for a long distance back to the source. As we get closer to the source, the fault impedance normally reduces. We now have multiple possible impedance values for a fault on the line. So how do we set up our impedance relay to operate for all of these different values? Well, the normal way is to set up an impedance operating zone. Inside the zone, we know that the fault is on the line that the impedance relay is protecting. And for any impedance value inside this zone, the relay will trip the circuit breaker, removing the fault from the system. Outside the protective zone, the relay will not operate. The impedance of the load will always be considerably higher than the impedance of the cables on overhead lines that feed them. When we use cables and overhead lines, we want as small as impedance as possible to transmit the power, as a high impedance means high system losses or lost revenue. We therefore use low impedance materials such as copper or aluminium to build them. The load is doing work and needs to generate magnetic fields to move objects or have a high impedance to heat materials up. They are therefore designed to have a high impedance. Because of this difference, it is easy to differentiate between an impedance value generated by a fault on the line and the normal system impedance.